Glory to God. God is good. Whew. Wasn't worship good this morning? Ah, oh, man. I just want to just breathe heaven in. And this morning, the last two weeks we've been working with the grace teams. You've been signing up for grace teams, right? Amen. This afternoon, there'll be some training going on. And my message today is on the ministries of helps, giving aid and support. The Lord has placed that out on my heart because what I, I, I learned some years ago in terms of the ministry of helps, a lot of folks in the body of Christ don't get it or don't understand it or haven't received a revelation on the ministries of help, of giving aid and support. If you, if you would, um, let's go real quick to 1 Corinthians 12, 27. And, and this is not, I, I don't think this is going to be a long message, you know, it's on Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to be preachy, preachy or teachy, teachy today. I just wanted to give what he gave me, but it's on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Are we there? Yes. All of you together are Christ's body. And each of you is a part of it. Say, I'm a part. Here are some of the parts of God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, and third are teachers. Then are those who do miracles and those who have the gift of healing, and those who can help others. Those who have gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers. Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gifts of healings? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages. Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not, Paul says. But check this out. In that whole list there, down in number six, sitting underneath the apostle, the prophet, the teachers, miracles, and gifts of healings, is helps. And it's such a, a picture that all of that is stacked on helps. Because nothing can happen with the top without helps. You, you see the picture? Without helps, giving aid and support. And so that's what I want to talk about a little bit this morning. Here, I, 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 I love Northlands because they have a revelation. They have this grace on them for grace teams, which is the ministry of helps just in case you didn't know. And what we're after here is 100% participation. So this message this morning is not just for the grace teams, it's for all of us, because we're all called in the body of Christ to give aid and support from our position of strength. And when that revelation really begins to stir up in us, that's when expansion comes. I say, that's when expansion comes. My hope this morning is for us to walk away on fire. For the embers to be stirred up just a little more. That is not church as usual. It's not high five and let's go and whatever. Well, we're burning inside constantly. Lord, what are you calling me to? Where can I apply my strength? And, and I know I got some notes here, but I, I can already feel it. Glory to God. <laughs> I can already feel me here and there because I, l l let, me, let me go over here and take a sidebar. When you talk about the, the gifts of helps, giving aid and support, that's a vital anointing in the body of Christ. And those of us who have that revelation, it becomes a part of us where it's not just a church thing, it's a life thing. It's a life thing. And it carries such a grace, such an anointing with it, that it even stands out in our workplace, 
school place and all places we go into. Because that great soreness to lend aid and support. Let me just tell you something else while I'm talking. With that, the other five that's under there, those function gifts, we can all step into a portion of that as we do ministry. Even out of helps, we can become apostolic, we can become prophetic, we can become evangelistic, we can become pastoral. Out of that place of helps, giving aid and support. Why? Because we're called to raise up a body. For us to be vibrant and strong, to take this word of grace out. That's why we're going to do service, because we see it coming. We see expansion coming. Going beyond these walls. You know, we say it all the time. You know, we're blessed to have so much leadership here. Turn to somebody and say, I'm a leader. Because you are. We're blessed here. So much leadership here. So many leaders. So many gifts. So many. Why did God do this? Because he has a plan for us here at Northlands. Raise us up, send us out, 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 because he wants this grace spread out there. Because there's so many places, so many churches lying in darkness. And somebody in this praying, Lord, there's got to be more. Yes, it is. And here we are. I said, yes, it is, and here we are. Amen. 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 We are vital to the kingdom. Everyone I see, I see ministry helps on you. I learned that a long time ago. I know what I'm called to, what my function is in the body. But right there, always lifting that up is the ministry of helps. It's on my heart to give aid and support to the body to give aid and support to the body. Because some of us are super strong. Some of us are very weak. But we all need aid and support. Glory to God. Mm. Let's go to Luke 16.10. You know, it's a lot of times, and why it's up there, I'll keep on talking. It's a lot of times folks coming into the ministry, and, and I'm old school, and you know, I'm not going to put that number on me, but I'm old school, you know. And, and I remember years ago when everybody was going after the big name, the big gifting, and, and all of that. And if ministry of helps would come up, they would look at it as something small. Something minute. No, that's not me. That's for <laughs> the peons. Don't you know who I am and what I'm called to? Hello. Luke 16, 10 says, if you are faithful, say faithful, in the little things, in the little things, you will be faithful in the large ones. But if you're not if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be what? Honest and greater responsibilities. And I see so many folks, uh, and through the years, you know, you know folks in the ministry and all of that, and, and the struggle that some have. And some is genuine, but some is because of that place in their heart that place in their heart of pride, of seeking greatness, rather having a heart to give aid and support right where they are. Right where they are. You want to talk about greatness? That's greatness. Right where they are, giving aid and support. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say Glory. I don't know if you know it yet, but I love the Lord. <laughs> and, and, and this morning, I, I want to share three areas with you. And the first of these is giving. Luke 6.38, I don't know if it's up there. Luke 6.38 
It says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom for the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And see, I, I'm from some of them old churches. As soon as they hit 638, they start pushing that wallet down, squirming in their seats, because that's a given, and everybody uses it to get money, you know. It's a mon- but see, that scripture right there is not just talking about money. Whatever you're giving out of yourself, and listen at this word I'm going to use, with the right motivation, it's coming back to you. And with the God thing, is always going to be multiplied. I say with the God thing, is always it's going to be multiplied. Whatever you're giving out, it's going to be multiplied. 20, 40, 60, 80, sometimes 100 fold, multiplied back to you. Why? Because of the motivation of your heart. Your heart is in the right place. I hear folks say, you know, the Lord say he'll give you the desires of your heart. Give me that Learjet, Cadillac, and whatever. <laughs> you know? But when your desires match up with his desires, it'll come to you. Because he's not going to set you up for failure. Hello? He's not going to set you up for failure. So it's important for us to keep the right motivation in our hearts toward the kingdom of God and toward the body of Christ. And let me just, I have some notes here. Let me just go ahead and, and, and read from because I don't want to stray too far away. And I, I made a little note here. When you step out with a willing heart to give aid and support to those of need that the Lord has highlighted to you, you'll be amazed at the ease that comes with that assignment or tasking. You'll be amazed at the ease that comes with it. Why? Because you're doing it from a place and rest out of him by his assignment that he's highlighted to you. How many times around here the Lord has highlighted someone to you? Go say this, go do that, go give this. And with it comes an ease, but also with it comes a reward. We give, why? To give. I like to say that, I learned that a long time ago. I don't give to get. Although he said things, I don't give to get, I give to give, because I learned this. I give to give to give to give. Listen at that, to give to give. I give, give, and it shall be given back to you. I give to give. There's no hiccup. It's a constant flow in my life of giving and it's being given back to me. There's no break in that because of my motivation, my attitude, and my heart for the kingdom of God. Folks who treat God like a roulette will give. Okay. What you <laughs> that's not kind of God we serve. You know, it comes down to this, our heart, our motivation, our love for people. That's why I love this church. It's a glimmer of the kingdom of God where there's all the mixtures, all the different pigmentations. And I see love developing and exploding here. Amen. Because see, love covers all that worldly stuff. Love covers. And one of my favorite scriptures, when you talk about a thriving community, and and we've we've spoke on this in news, this is Acts 2. And, And let me tell you, Acts 2. I really see Northlands as a church of the Acts. I really, personally, I do. Personally, I do. And then bear with me while I read this because there's several different verses. But what you'll find twisted in this is the ministry of helps, giving aid and support, all entwined in that. So let everyone in Israel know And you know what this is, because this is where the upper room experience happened, right? And a sound came as a rushing mighty wind. Can I give you a side note on that? As a rushing mighty wind. In 1974, young guy, you know, 
and me and a few other college folks on fire for God, full of zeal. Not a bunch of knowledge, but on fire, full of zeal. You know, carrying what we knew to be this loving word of God. And we were in this complex, apartment complex, ministering, evangelizing. And so it was a couple that we were talking to invited us to their place. And we're up there ministering. And I can't remember what, but we was preaching and talking. And all of a sudden, suddenly, I heard a sound. We all heard it. And it was like a jet plane engine came through the room. A rushing mighty wind. It was over. What happened? Folks got baptized and saved right there. Right in the bathtub. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do with that when power comes in like that? It changes things. It changes your perspective. And so let everyone know in Israel, know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's word pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Let me pause right there. It's a cry in the earth right now. What should we do? What should we do? Because we're tucked away, you know, at, at, in church and all of that. But those of us who are sensitive in the things of spirit, those of us who intercede, we hear it. And the Lord wants us to be comfortable right where we are doing what we do. Because that's part of his promise. But he's also calls us to give aid and support. And prayer, and it's a standing in the gap. And this church here is so sensitive in the spirit and the things of the spirit. That's why I encourage you to come out at 9 o'clock to our prayer meetings. It can change you and bring such a sensitivity to your spirit and to your soul in the things of God. As we come together and pray and connect even more in the things of the spirit. That's not a plug, I'm just saying. <laughs> and Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and return to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's my friend, Holy Spirit. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children, even to the Gentiles all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. For those who believe what Peter said was baptized and added to the church that day, 3,000 souls. We're adding to this church. We're preaching this good news, this gospel of grace. This love of God. Amen? Building up, training up, sending out. Say, I'm a part of it. I'm a part of it. I am sold out. I'm a part of this. And if he called you here, you're a part of it. If there's a pulling on your heart, you're a part of it. And the first place we have to find is where can I give aid and support? And the first place we will point you to is the grace teams. Because it's vital to the community. It's vital to expansion. It's vital to growth. It's vital to going to two surfaces. And that's why the Lord had me ministering today on the Ministry of Health's grace teams. And be training this evening. There's still, you can always sign up for grace teams. Don't think it's over because the sign up was a couple of weeks ago. Is that a plug? No, I'm just saying. You can always sign up. And a deep sense of awe came over them. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place. Community, y'all served everything they had, and they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And I really don't feel there that folks just got broke so they could give. I mean, if the Lord called them, that's fine. But folks had so much that they could. 
give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Whatever your gifting is, give it out. Why? Because more is coming. More is coming. Whatever your gifting is, give it out. More is coming. There's no stingy in the kingdom of God. We don't serve a stingy God. Amen. And as sons and daughters of God, he didn't call us to be a stingy people. In our time, in our giftings, in our finances, in any area of our life, we're to give aid and support particularly to the body of Christ. Why? Because those are our brothers and our sisters. But also to strangers. Those are folks who don't look like us in the spirit, so to speak. Why? Because we're changing hearts, we're changing minds, and we're changing lives. Amen. Come on, somebody smile. Don't look so serious. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm a happy person. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Mm. Let, me, let me just read this note I put in. When we walk in the grace of giving, there's such a graciousness that's on our lives that we will bring with it a stronger anointing to accomplish assignments from the kingdom of God. Y'all want me to say that again? Okay. I'll go real slow. When we walk in the grace of giving, there is such a graciousness that is on our lives that we will bring with it a stronger anointing to accomplish assignments from the kingdom of God. The Lord gave me that, and I said amen to it. That's what I told him, amen, amen. Because my mind is made up, I'm his. I said I'm his. I'm, tell somebody I'm his. Because, see, sometimes we have to tell somebody I'm his so they'll know it. I'm his. I don't know what you're thinking about me, but I'm his. <laughs> the second thing I want to talk about is doing. Doing. And this is not out of performance, so let me go ahead and say that straight up, up front. Doing. And there are two ingredients that are needed in the Ministry of Help slash Grace Teams for our recipe for expansion. And that's the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. I said the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. And if your fruit ain't like this kind of fruit, you know it didn't come from Holy Ghost. You know, we need to get a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And when we flow and go in the ministry of helps and grace teams, and we walk up to somebody, that whole aroma is on us of patience, of love, of kindness, of gentleness. All the fruits of the Spirit. Tell somebody, all of it's mine. And it is, all of it. It's all mine. All of that is yours. We can walk in this. Why? Because we're sons and daughters of God. We have the capability and also the capacity because we're created in his image. Don't short sell yourself on just how vital you are and who you are in the kingdom of God, in the earth. I said in the earth. Yeah, we aliens. Yeah. Because we're from somewhere else. I, I, I know it. I don't know about you, but I'm from, from somewhere else. I'm here on assignment. In this earth suit. Because I'm a spirit being. Because I'm created in the image of my daddy. My papa God.
Mm. Glory to God. Just raise your hands right now. And, and if you're filling your heart, you can just wait and repeat what I'm going to say. But Holy Spirit, fill me up fresh and new for today. Your infilling is not a one-time thing, but it's constant for every day. Fill us up fresh and new for today. Because your grace we need to give aid and to give support in the body of Christ, that this gospel can go forward. Amen? Amen. I felt that so strong. I wanted to take a pause for the cause because I felt that. Amen. Let me just go ahead and read this here. I'm still talking about doing. Expansion comes when needed help and support is alive and well in what we are called to accomplish and the gifts are in operation. All of us have gifts, spiritual gifts. None of us are lacking. If there's lack, it's because you're not seeking. You're not knocking on that door of God. Hey, I want more. I want more of you. There's more for me to do. I can feel it. I can taste it. I can see it. Lord, fill me up. There's more. Till we come to that place of hunger and thirsting after righteousness for kingdom's sake. And for our sake. When that alarm clock went off in Israel in 1948, there was a shift and a change in the earth. And all of us are called to step up to the plate. Amen? Because time is short. Not for us, because we're forever. But in the earth, time is short. Did y'all hear what I just said? Not for us, because we're forever. But in the earth, time is short. That's why we have to go get them. That's why we have to make space. Because this anointing and grace is coming in to fill it up, to send them out, to fill it up, to send them out, to fill it up, to send them out. The, the harvest is plentiful, but we're raising up labor. I said, we're raising up laborers. Amen. Amen. With giftings and talents and anointings, full of the fruit of the Spirit. So much so, they go around and say, I'm busting loose, I'm busting loose. Because we're so full of his love, his grace, his kindness, his patience, his love. I'm on this because I want it to stir up in you. Because that's how I see the body of Christ. That's how I see us. And I'm compassionate, very compassionate, very tender toward the body, very. But as some folks I run into, I just say hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You just say, hallelujah, and you just, thank you. Somebody says, self-control. You say, hallelujah, and you just keep on stepping. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> don't get me to laughing. <laughs> Please don't. Because some folks hurt by laughing, it goes high-pitched sometimes. Don't, 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 don't get me to laughing. Expansion comes when needed help and support are alive and well in what we are called to accomplish, and the gifts are in operation. Also, I have also what we need to come to understand from an apostolic view is to see people built up and advancing. From an apostolic view. See, when you hear that word apostolic or apostle, it's a building up. And it's a sending out. And see, we can all take on that nature as the Lord raises us up and highlight different areas. We become very apostolic in our view and our thinking. We want to see folks built up, raised up, and going out, doing the will of God on their lives. There's nothing sweeter. I tell you, there's nothing sweeter in the kingdom 
It's a sweet aroma to his nostrils when we're right in the center of his will, doing what he's called us to be and to do. Amen? The ministry of helps, giving aid and support, is very vital from a position of grace. And we know grace here, you know. It's, 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 words really can't express it, his grace. But we're getting a handle on it, a glimmer of it, that we've been totally forgiven even though we didn't deserve it. Totally set free from slavery of sin. Amen. It's been abolished in our lives. The only thing we have to deal with is certain sin habits that we're dealing with, amen, by the power of God, through grace by faith. Amen? Why? So we can be strong for others, strong for ourselves, strong for... The first folks that look at you really is the ones you wake up with every day. It's called family. And they let you know where you really are and where you really aren't. Amen? Amen? So we need grace in our household especially. We need the ministry of helps in our household, giving aid and support, especially if you have little ones. I mean, that, that grace comes on you for, for giving aid and support. If your child bangs and told you right there, baby, what's up? Does it hurt? And that's out of that spirit of love. It's the same thing we have to extend to the body of Christ. Amen. You will have even more grace on you because of the motivation of your heart towards others. That's why he will leave the 99 for the one. Where a number of folks, even in the body of Christ, will want to stick with the 99. I ain't going out there in the unknown for one. I'm, I'm comfortable right here in my space, my spot. You go ahead. But that motivation, that God kind of motivation, will have us let the 99 stay here and go for that one. Amen? We're going after the one, y'all. That's, that's, that's South Georgia, y'all. We're going after that one, y'all. Amen? We're going after them. We're going after them. We're making room here for them to be trained up and set free. We're expansion, we're exploding. I see it. I see it. And I have a note here, the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit that you have cultivated in your life from receiving and believing the loving Word of God, full of grace and truth, is the result of you seeking the kingdom of God. You want to stir up your, your Holy Ghost soil? You want to cultivate it? Seek the kingdom of God. Amen. Get hungry, get thirsty after him. The third area I want to talk about but let me get this note out real quick. This will always be a position in, in receiving everything that is needful and what the Lord has called us to be and to do in any given moment as we're led by the Holy Spirit in advancing the kingdom. In any given moment, all we have to do is say, Holy Spirit, help. And he's right there to give aid and support. How powerful is that? Holy Spirit, help! Right there instantly to give aid and support. With us. When we're sensitive in the spirit, we're here to call for help. And the Lord will highlight it, that thing, that situation, whatever it is for us to give aid and support into it, the ministry of helps. Then the third and final thing I want to talk about is change from a kingdom perspective. And I'm not going to really get preachy, preachy, teachy, teachy, and I'm just putting it out there. And this is where y'all participate once I give these to you. Change from a kingdom 
perspective will help you grow. It will help you grow. Change from a kingdom perspective teaches you to be flexible. Change from a kingdom perspective reveals your strength. There's no weaklings in the kingdom of God, believe me. You just need it, your strength revealed. And so, welcome change. Change from a kingdom perspective can make you more compassionate. And lastly, change from a kingdom perspective offers opportunities to advance the kingdom of God. And I think I'm going to list all five up there after that. There we are. And you know, I think I'm out of time. Wow, I thought it was going to be a short message. <laughs> but I want to take the next few minutes and just invite you to lean in to the kingdom of God. Lean into his glory. Lean into Holy Spirit. And say, Lord, where in my heart haven't I received change? Because as we're moving and flowing and going, sometimes change can seem a little tough, a little hard. But when we're open to change from a kingdom perspective, it produces life, zoe. Always, always. Why is this happening to me, Lord? Just watch. Give it a moment. Amen? So, Father, I just thank you right now, Lord God. I thank you for your grace, for your favor, for your love over Northlands, Father. I thank you for what you've called us to be and to do, Father, in the kingdom, in this earth, Father. I thank you, Lord, for those you're raising up, Lord God, in this household, Father, to serve. To serve. To flow and to go, Father. To operate out of your giftings, out of your fruits, out of your anointing, Lord. Because it's vital in this season and in this time that we're in, Lord God. Because here we know it's not church as usual. And we're very unusual here. <laughs> yes, we are. And so, Lord, we, we, we glorify your name. We lift you up, Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, for you highlighting us, for what you called us at this season and time, Father God, to be a part of in this house. And over all these, Father God, I speak and release your blessing, Lord. I surround them, Father God, with faith and with love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.